Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tadai Ma, Terrace House Podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I am Robert Scarpanito, and I am joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanwa. Jack Cepeda. Irishaimase. And Colin Sparling. Hello, everybody. I don't know if you guys have been seeing, but stuff has been coming out about Tokyo 2019, 2020, and I personally... I, for one, am very excited. The hype train is real, but what is the abbreviation going to be? We need something, like, <laughs> digestible. We can't just sit here and say, Terrace House, Tokyo, 2019, 2020, THT a million 2019, times, 2020. Yeah, a million yeah. times you know, a year. The, like, what is going to be? the same show that's had boys and girls in the city. <clears throat> yeah, that's but a there's, a, there's a good acronym or initialism there. That followed, though. It was like a description, whereas this is just like it feels like what they put down like as like, OK, we know we're doing another season. This is what it's tentatively called just so that we like can contextualize it. Whereas now it's just like they kept it. They didn't come up with They just with, kept like, the project name. They didn't even bother yeah. coming yeah. up, and it's coming up like with it, an actual name. To me, with previous seasons, it kind of was like almost like they kept it in suspense as to whether or not they were going to have more episodes or how long the shows the season's going to go, right? And then Tori Chan would always be like, "Oh, good news! We've you know they've ordered twenty four more episodes." Da da da. And it was like a big like moment of jubilation. Now they're just like, "Don't worry, motherfucker! It's going until twenty twenty because the Olympics. That's why. Yep. Don't and no suspense anymore." So, are we really just going to call it Terrace House Tokyo 2019, 2020 every time? <laughs> I yeah, take that, a breath. It, it's it's a mouthful, um, and we really don't know that much information. I mean, we've gotten tidbits here and there. We know officially now what the members look like. We've mm-hmm. gotten a poster, uh, and we've gotten a teaser trailer, so to speak, for every single new member of this new season. Uh, and then none of it I, translated. None of it translated, and like Jack said, we do know that it's going to go up through Olympics time for next year. What, what if, what if there's the, an Olympian in the house? That's yeah, there needs my to be. Hold there on. speculation. Aren't we just yeah. assuming that it's going to go up to the Olympics? Just because no, it's been stated. That's been confirmed. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Filming is going to end like right before the Olympics next year. Yeah. That's okay. what it's basically for. a vehicle for the state to promote the Olympics. Nice. For sure. Yeah. I'm fine. Right. I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm cool. I'm, I'm cool. Honestly, my favorite character I've seen so far from Tokyo 2019 2020. And I, I've just made a promise to myself that I'm always going to say the full name Tokyo 2019-2020 now. <sighs> hey, man, it's your life. Every time you say it, you lose um, like seven minutes off your life. It's fine. I, I don't have many left anyway. Um, my favorite character <laughs> I've seen so far is the house. Cause oh, yeah. Y'all, <laughs> that the house, house looks pretty. All Dude, I saw was the stairs in the one room, a, but I heard it's three stories. There is an indoor pool. Yo. Okay, I didn't see that part. I've been kind of good, trying to go blind on the thing. Me too, the man. I'm media blackout. Out. No spoilers, Robert. Come on. Then why man. are we talking about it on our <laughs> podcast? <laughs> nah, we hey have guys, to talk this about dude, it. This with, thing's coming out. Listen. I haven't seen anything and I refuse to see anything, so I it's, can't talk about it. But at let's the talk same about time, it. It, it's kind of our fucking job to be on the forefront of these these spoilers, so to speak. Actually, I think as of the time recording this podcast, I think you can watch it if you live in Japan right now. The first yeah. episode. Yes. I think that's a thing. Yes, Holy you can. Shit. Holy if shit. you if you lucky, are lucky, lucky enough bastards to live in Japan, you can watch the episodes yeah. right now. Actually, it, it, I think I, I wonder what time in Japan it goes up because it's it's technically May 14 right now there. That's what I'm saying. I think it's yeah. up like right now. Oh it my is. Gosh. I don't want to think about it anymore because what? It's not going to come out here till like August. So I got other shit to do. Damn it. But I'm, oh, but I'm okay. looking forward to it. But we need it. So we need we an acronym. Be... I don't know what it is, but we need one. A better man than me or a better woman. Come up with something, please. Jack, the no. acronym is Terrace House Tokyo 2019-2020. That's not an acronym. That's just what it's called. <laughs> T nineteen twenty? I don't know. T twenty. T twenty? T minus ten. Nine. Uh, I eight, could do I could seven. do T twenty. But I just ter- don't know if that'll stick. Terrace House colon the Olympics one. The one with the Olympics. Olympics. the Olympics one. The one with okay. the Olympics. There we go. All right. We have a winner. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I do want to give a shout out though. Y'all on the Terrace House subreddit are crazy. Y'all are finding crazy. You're you're finding stuff way faster than I expected anyone to. Like we have people's Instagrams. We didn't even see their faces yet. Well, I mean now we have, but we're see like y'all. You are sleuths. Yeah, that and all they're seeing is like their shins and like their chins. 
shins. And they're like, oh, yeah, I shins. remember yeah. that. Shins. Yeah, they're checking Instagram down their account. Instagram account. I'd recognize yeah. that shin anywhere. R- running it through algorithms and shit, tracking it on, like, they walked on the sidewalk on Google Maps somewhere and, like, the algorithm found it. I don't oh, know. And- we do know where it actually takes place, and I can't remember what it's called off the, off of the top of my head, but it takes place in West West Tokyo, and it's not far from, I believe, Shibuya. Mm. And, and the um, address is 328. Like, hey. that's the kind <laughs> of level of, like, Reddit sleuthing I expect out of the internet. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so, like, somewhere in West Tokyo, and I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but um, we will do a lot of content about 2019, 2020 very soon. It's coming. Cl- it's it's coming sooner than you think. It'll be it'll be here. Know. It'll be here sooner than you think. But it is still August. But it'll be here. Go fast. If I'm guessing, it'll be here three months from now. So <laughs> July 14. Yeah, I'm calling it. It'll be here July. F- no wait. That's July two months from now. August 28. <laughs> no, Robert, I'm gonna say I'm, yeah. <laughs> what year is now. it? Yeah, late July, <laughs> early August. So yeah, yeah, it's gonna be in August. All right. Usually, usually there's like the eight weeks for them to do the episodes, and then four to six weeks after that for them to edit those eight episodes to publish them here. Please look ah. forward to it. Same. Um, no, but in today's episode of Tadaima, we're going to be focusing on the most controversial couple in opening doors. Is that fair? Is no one saying a more controversial, do we think? I think uh, it's fair to say. They were up until this couple happened. They were the up word, until Yui and Io. Wow. The word controversial. I don't know. I'd pick maybe unexpected more. That's that's just my opinion, though. Yeah. I un- totally didn't see this coming. All the above. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were based in... in uh, to be fair, uh, I feel like it was, it's more so Yui. Yui was behind a lot of hiding a lot of this stuff. You know what I mean? Right. A lot of the, yeah. the controversy that was there, whereas Noah and Santa was like, Noah and Santa were both kind of in on it. Like, so I would have some... figured oh. for them, but not these two. Fair enough. To real quick, guys, give the audience some context here. The very recent developments here, but Yui's exit interview has just recently been translated very recently and so we are providing links for these exit interviews for yui and io in the description in the show notes etc so go watch them for yourselves in all their english subtitle glory come back here and now we're going to discuss that and so welcome back hello welcome back to the show you're listening to tadai ma the terrace house podcast yes um (laughs) so i guess let's let's kind of uh pull the curtain back a little bit and let's start like with why one we think they're controversial and two they think they're unexpected right Mm -hmm. so I would think the controversy probably comes from the whole sock incident thing into the hand-holding incident into the no uh, not Noah Yui and Io banged off camera and then we find out they didn't banged but they might have maybe half banged <laughs> into the Is this anything like a Tetris bang Yeah into the secret stealth almost hookup of Io and Yui yeah, and so At we Io's house. So and then we and by extension you guys were all victims to the editing once again. Prime I example. Don't, I don't know if this one was editing, my friend. This is this is Yui and all them just kind of hiding yeah. it out. But I don't know where where do we start? Well, we that, right that, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. This this was Yui hiding it. I think the the most of that controversy comes from Yui was hounding Risiko for how dare you do something off camera. Full right. well knowing she did something pretty big off camera as well. It was a yeah. hypocrisy of it all. Much worse. Yeah. You was pretty much at, at the end of the season. My takeaway is that you was pretty much the biggest villain in the house at the time of the season closed. For sure. That's interesting too because from what we learned from the exit interview, like everything she did was in order to like save face. Right. Nope. It just backfired. <laughs> So it's it, nothing no, nothing about her exit interview made me feel any better about any of it yeah she has None a way of, of doing that she has a way of trying to like explain herself and it's just completely like unsatisfactory uh, unsatisfactory yeah because like, it's just she it, and to to try to or to start to get into the interview it just spewing bullshit that's what i was thinking <laughs> the entire time just spewing wow bullshit. trying to save Harsh. face yeah yeah and I, I i don't know a lot of it was like 
when the whenever the finger got pointed at her, she was pointing it back at back at other people. And the part that stood out to me, and maybe we can start the discussion here of the interview, is that the when she allegedly her and Io hooked up, other people were at the house. Uh, yeah, that was a revelation yeah, to me um, too. So three so, couples essentially, right? You have Maya and Kaido, then you have Soda and Shinsuke, the best couple, <laughs> the best couple of three, and then you have Io and. Yui there and I didn't know it was all of them the, the way it came up during the sock incident conversation in the girls room was that it was kind of just Yui and Io. well no here here's where I'm confused because this is the impression that I got from the exit interview that this was two separate events one they all went out together and the last train was already gone so they stayed at like Io's parents place with all the friends and Yui was like somehow Somehow, I wound up sleeping near Io. Right. And uh-huh. so, like, we were talking, and he, like, turned my face toward him, and we kissed. <laughs> Show it, right. you bastard. Somehow. And to, and, to rewind, and to rewind, I love how she threw that little excuse in there that the last train for the night already left. Sure. I mean, I like, they're all having fun out in Tokyo. Like, you, yeah. that's fine. Like, go and yeah. crash at a friend's place. But then... I think it's a separate event when, like, Yui and Io are out and then they stay at his parents' place alone, not in a room full of people, preferably. And that's when, quote unquote, Io gets excited. Mm-hmm. Wait, this and, was two? I thought this is the same night. This is, I see, that's, see, night, that, that's where I'm confused, too. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm it, not sure. I it's not, because it, if you watch both interviews, uh, but Io and Yui, it sounds like they're almost talking about two different nights, but it doesn't. But they aren't, though, I don't think at the same time, because what it what, that's when I really got confused because I watched Io's first. And then in Yui's, when she brought up that everyone else from the house was there at Io's parents, yeah, they house. like crashing at the house. Like, is, is uh, Shinsuke and Soda spooning? Like, what's going on here? Yeah. Well, mean, I, yes, that's for sure. Awesome. And it almost made it sound like I'm not sure, but it almost made it sound like they, they were all in the same room. Oh man! Yeah, well, that's that's why I was no. in the belief that they're two separate nights. He, so here's what I thought, and my brain maybe filled this hole in on accident. But consider that if anyone is going to be banging that night, it would easily be Io because it's his house. He has a room. Yeah. So it's whoever he Fair. invites into that room can then bang. The, and the, that well, night it was Yui. But by, by that logic, then it wasn't just like. Yui's, Yui's explanation where I magically ended up next to Io. Somehow. So don't just deliberately walk into someone's room and then end up in their bed next to them. Somehow. Yeah. What if they were all in the same room? There's no way they were all in the same room. There's no God, way. God, I hope no. not. I, yeah, I'm because not. the way she phrased it, I ended up next to Io, that implies that everyone was sleeping in the same yeah. room. Yeah, I, 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 maybe I should watch it again, but I thought it was the same night. But it's kind of crazy hearing Io describe the events, too. Because it changes my whole perception for what happened that night. like, And he openly admitted, too. He's like, yeah, so we tried to, and we couldn't. So then I finished myself off. Yeah, he admitted it. <laughs> like, okay, Whoa. so he backed he backed that story that we knew from the episode where you, like, Yui gets interrogated by Rosako. You know, and I will give this man props. I think Io has no shame, maybe in a good way. Because the way he delivered the I had to finish myself was kind of the same way he delivered I cheated on my last girlfriend. He yeah. delivered like matter of factly this is a fact about my life, take it as you will. Right. That's the kind of thing what? I just don't think anyone would open I mean, correct me if I'm wrong if you guys think I'm wrong here. I just don't think in western reality TV anyone is almost like allowed to even say that on TV. You're probably not for A, you're probably not even allowed cuz they probably get censored if you say something like that. And B, it's like it's almost like it seems like almost like too shameful. To say, I don't know. What are you guys thoughts I, on that? I, I just for think for a guy like, to say that. Don't be detailed. Like, there's no reason yeah. for yeah. him to have put it yeah. in those terms. Pure or definition of an overshare. Like, you just be like, I mean, like we did stuff, but we didn't have sex. Period. Dot. End of sentence. End of. Statement. We made out the end. <laughs> like, let yeah, people, stuff happened. You yeah, know, like, it, it construe what even, that means. Yeah, could have even gone up to like we almost did stuff, but then she wanted to stop. There you go. That's it. Then you yeah. stop at that. 
You or know, I, he yeah, could have just said like there was foreplay, but nothing beyond that. He probably would have just like, got grilled. I think maybe by the roommates or obviously you know fans of the show would be like, no, really I need details. Happened. Yeah, tell me exactly so like, what happened. So then they're just like, fuck it, let's just lay it all out there in yeah. all the gory details. Well, so while we're talking about IO side of this rendezvous night, I wanted to bring this conversation to his view on Risiko because I found this wild. He said that when, uh, like, he he admits, hey, yeah, actually, we didn't do anything. We didn't actually sex. But I told Risiko that we did. Yeah, Yeah, because he he wasn't thinking, he said, when he was talking. Yeah, in the heat of the moment, he was just like, yeah, we we did it. I mean, but at the same time, like, either way, and we even said it on this show, too, like, either way, they did stuff, and that's what matters. Well, technically, if we're talking specifically about virginity, it does technically matter. Virginity, yeah, yeah, virginity in that, is a in that social sense, it, construct. It is, yeah, <laughs> it does. But the fact that they went as far as like doing every, pretty much everything, but actual, you know, intercourse or whatever, like, still the same. It still causes for the same argument, you know. Yeah, she's she isn't as pure as she wants people to believe she is. Right. But so what was extra weird to me is that. Io thought after everything was said and done, he thought that Risiko looked like the bad one in the house, and he felt bad for making her look like a villain. Right. And I'm like, excuse, hold on. Wait one Joto minute. <laughs> like Joto a minute. A minute. That's not true. You is totally the bad one in the house. Yeah, yeah there, there, there's he, no question. But like we speculated while we were watching the episodes, right? He was feeling kind of guilty because he was he played party to dogpiling on Risiko when, you know, like, like he who was without sin cast for a stone and Io and Yui were not without sin, basically, when they were coming for Risako. Oh, so you're right. kind of you know, saying so he, like he's feeling he guilty saying that he felt bad. Yeah. then so that's why he had to kind of come clean, you know, and talk to her. No, so. no. But what I'm saying is he he said, at least the way I read it, is that after everything came clean, he thought Risiko looked like the objective villain in the house. Cool. And I'm like, no. Well, but but like, does he mean on the show? Does he mean to the audience that she looked like the villain or did she did he mean by the like to the rest of the house? She looked like the villain. I, I read it as like on the show. Like He thinks for the show. Mm-hmm. She looked like a villain. Yeah, because I don't. I mean, from all those perspe- perspectives that I've read on the subreddit and our own perspectives, I don't. I don't get that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, we've um, known for a long time that Io doesn't have the best perspective on what other people think, because you know he's like, Yui's fine with me telling her about my boogers, etc. We can't mm-hmm. give them that yeah. much credit. <laughs> Daily report. Daily booger reports, you know? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, also, during Io's exit interview, it was actually like I was very conscious of how Io was all, almost constantly touching his face. Through the constantly. Yeah. Like, like, it was a lot. Enti- he was entire super interview. close. Like, I know it. he had his, like, legs boosted up and he was trying to rest his head in his, in his hands, but it was like, dude. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, man, I, I think, I think his nose was, hairs are tickling and he's just, like, so, trying to, like, it's just bugging him. Something, but I mean, because I think we talked about it on the show, and Jack, real Jack, really put emphasis on it, and so I was like, kind of looking for it subconsciously. It always, ha- <laughs> it he's always touching his face. I mean, it made him like mumble because he kept putting his hand in front of his face. Yeah, he does mumble a lot. And so, while we're stop. on the subject, too, you know, I kind of felt for him when he on, on his entrance interview, he was talking more in depth about his uh, career, if you can call it that. Uh, on the professional soccer team, the minor Ouch, minor league if soccer team. You can team. call it that. I mean, he would be the first one, right? Because he never got to play. He got paid less. He never developed the technical still skills to play more, and then thus get paid more. So I'm not trying to cut him down, but I mean, by his own admission, you know, he was kind of just lacking, and it was a lackluster experience for him. But the real sad, tragic part was when he like sat down and was like, "Hey, I want to quit." I guess his coach mm. told him on the team, you know, said. Don't come in tomorrow. We'll be fine without you. Like, damn. Yeah, that's, he's basically like savage. he's. Yeah, he's basically like, yeah, don't let your, the door hit you on the ass on the way out. I mean, like, it, yeah, in a way, like anyone that's going to say that to you, like you were right to leave. Obviously, it wasn't a healthy relationship where, yeah. you know, your coach had your best interest in mind or nurtured your skills or anything like damn. Not, not, not at all. I mean, he did. He did mention, though, too, that he was never real. Like, it didn't sound like he was much of a team player. You got he that. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah no, he did kind of admit that. Yeah, he said something about how like he it's hard for him to work on a team. Yeah, he couldn't fit yeah. in. Yeah, he couldn't mm -hmm. feel like part of the team. So who knows, man? But also the fact that he said he didn't have the technical skills and he's there like what, like a year and nine months, something like that. And like, dude, if you're not getting paid enough and like the secret sauce to you getting paid more is get better at soccer, you should be fucking coming early every day, staying late, sharpening your skills. Like, what the fuck, dude? That's how you make more money. That's how you become a pro. Like practice i'm not saying he didn't but obviously you know 2020 retrospect he didn't put whatever work in was necessary to get that done so it's almost like kind of hard for me to feel sorry for him for that yeah no. i mean the only insight into that we really got out of the interview was like he's like yeah i was getting up at like 4 5 o'clock in the morning every right. single day right and i don't know if that mean he was training or what but i, I mean obviously his skills weren't enough to the coaches right so, um but one, one thing i couldn't help but notice during this interview though too is Io speaks so much more properly in this en entrance interview. You know what I mean? It's like there's no mumbling. He's speaking very distal style, right? He's speaking yeah. very formally. Um, and he's very, in like, he's enunciating way harder than he usually I does. I mean, you're meeting his representative there. You know, we don't know the real Io yet. Right. Well, I have a theory about that. Um, keep in mind, right when he joined Terrace House, he was probably a more structured human being. He had a lot of structure to his life, waking up at the exact same time every morning, going to soccer practice every day. And then all of a sudden that structure was taken away from him. Granted, he relinquished it in some ways, right? But he lost that thing that kind of made him who he is. I, I imagine for the longest time he was like, Ayo Fukuda, soccer player. That's it. Like that's his identity. Mm. And to have practically Absolutely. have his identity taken away from him you know it's rough and we kind of see it on the show you know it looks like he's kind of dealing with having too much time on his hands in a very bad way like he doesn't know what to do he does yeah, the dishes like, for fun it made me um, much more sympathetic having watched the entrance interview to like the way yeah. that he was in the house that he was just kind of like hanging out it's like going hard at school or at work for like years and then suddenly that's gone from your life yeah and so, so he like, said yeah he just rest kind of for, dude he kind, of, he kind of just looked forward to doing the dishes every morning that was it and then right. just wait for everyone to come home from work but man so he, it's gotta be relaxing he, though yeah he he ends his entrance interview with i just want to sleep in i want to take it easy right mm -hmm. and i think maybe perhaps going back to colin's point he took it a little too easy got a little too chill and uh kind of let down all of his barriers all of his distal barriers i mean and you can kind of see it, it it's almost representative in his looks over the course of the season too his looks actually subtly change like i mean he, he ends up getting his hair cut his style of clothing that he wears actually changes pretty drastically Gets those checkerboard glasses. Pants. right yeah checkerboard pants checkerboard and pants. i yeah. mean even in the exit interview dude like dude goes from wearing like athletic soccer type garb in his entrance interview to an, in his exit interview he's wearing like this fucking sweater that I, like that looks like it's straight out of the 90s like, and dude, good for him too because like, he has a job that he likes now he's getting yeah. fulfillment from that so good for him he's found something he's found a a way yeah gotta, it's a source of happiness for sure yeah i gotta say there was one big discrepancy between the intro and exit interviews that made me a little sus against io i was mm. i was a little suspect in mm. the entrance interview he was like i want to fall in love i just i just want to i want to fall in love mm. and i had a relationship before but i haven't for like six months and oh, yeah. i just really want to i want to fall in love i want to meet a girl and fall in love fall in love <laughs> keyword here three words fall in love right uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, sorry what and was then, that what was this point he wants to fall in love. Oh, okay. And then <laughs> in the exit interview, he mentions that when he came into Tara's house, he was like, I thought I'd just get like a bunch of Instagram followers and flirt with girls. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's true. That thought is I'd very... Yeah, he said he thought being on the show, it would help true. him be more... We have more yeah. luck with the ladies or something like that. Yeah. Give him more fucking big dick energy. He initially uh, wanted to leave <laughs> the show single. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. He was he was like fucking he wanted to be, I guess, a poon slayer by the end of it. Yikes. Oh uh, that's and, a phrase. <laughs> yeah. And, and Yui is surprised too, because she didn't see this coming either. Right? She yeah, thought it, that she should stay well, single because she's looking for a job for whatever to, weird correlation that is in her head. To be fair, did she ever see Io coming? No. Damn it, Robert. Oh, oh, oh fucking. No. <laughs> 
This has been Tadaima. Itakimas. Let's yeah, let's end this. <laughs> More like Itadakimas. Yeah. Uh, if you want to so, eat it, if you uh, want to eat it, come here's on, the thing. The I mean, they... uh, <laughs> why? Wow. No. <laughs> Hey, how, where not to learn how to speak Japanese? Uh, this uh, this show, <laughs> yep. Um, so I, I'm off so so time. Yui didn't see I didn't see Io as a potential dating romance partner. Well, neither did neither. Yeah, Io Io definitely did not. See okay, you now I remember what I was gonna say. So they're dating now for a long time, and it goes without saying. Like, right? Can we all assume like they probably you know she's probably fully graduated now. She's probably taking a master's class now at this phase in the dark arts. You know, let's go deeper. What does that we mean, Jack? Any more euphemisms? <laughs> Can you the explain that? Of, <laughs> the dark arts of love making is what I'm saying. Like they've been dating for a while, so you know, even though they it didn't happen that night, it's safe to assume you know if they're still together, they're a happy couple. They're probably doing doing things, doing things and stuff. Doing mm-hmm. doing the uh, doing the dirty, doing the yeah. deed. Yeah, they're having right, so sex they're, is what you're so, saying. Yeah, yes. so they're having sex. So yes, dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Wow, nah, that's just mean. <laughs> <laughs> so i no so i uh, i did i did want to talk about though to make to get back to something a little bit more wholesome i please <laughs> that to io's entrance interview when he was talking about you know when this coach was like you know don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out like i mean this dude spent 21 years of his life playing soccer and like i i think not even what he said in his interest interview about how broken he was over this whole thing even speaks to like what was going through his head because as someone that like played seven years of football and that's only seven years like you get brainwashed you know what I mean like you get caught up in that mentality that the coaches feed you that the community feeds you about being in a community like a you know a, a school sport and I mean, you're you're led to believe that it's like, you know, this is a huge deal. Like, you know, you should think this way and act this way. And the coach's word is fucking law. You know what I mean? Like, that's just what it is. They have like this level of control over you. And, and so that's all like, you know, that's your life. Right. Exactly. And I, as someone that actually suffered through like. I, I suffered as a kind of a strong word. I know, sounds like, like an abusive coach. Colin. Say, not you, not, not, not an abusive coach, like, but I do you get triggered. I, what I will say is I, t- I dealt with small town like football politics. I'll say that, um, and, and like uh, one year in football, and it was it it destroyed my mental health. I was Whoa. not doing doing very well. Um, that sucks. Yeah, and so I kind of sympathize with what he's going through. Like he's he said he went home and he just cried oh, and cried yeah. and cried, oh, and yeah. like I'm like, dude, that's like. My situation was bad, but I couldn't imagine for him. Like, he was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like I was trying to make football my livelihood. He was trying to make soccer his livelihood. And that just, like, fucking basically was put under the guillotine right there. I wonder if he tried to work maybe full-time or part-time jobs at the same time, too, or if it was just not possible with their schedule. Probably not with their schedule. It was probably kind of a trap. Yeah, I mean, probably about travel, too, with that. travel. Like, in in his case, he'd travel and go sit down. Right. And it. part of it, too, is he mentioned that financially he couldn't go on anymore, right? Like, that was kind of the ultimate yeah. clencher was that his finances were tough. I imagine if he was able to juggle a part-time job with soccer, it wouldn't be as big a deal. But, I mean, being a professional, any kind of athlete, even golf, I'm willing to admit, takes up your entire life. Yeah. I mean, the good news here is that, you know, I was on to bigger, better things. You know, he emerge from this victoria so to speak he's kind of internet famous now we're talking about his ass here it's just his mind. ass and, just and his i can't ass. imagine yeah Thank just his ass. and i can't imagine all the people the international people listening to our show right now they're like it's fucking football like what is soccer football. <laughs> like, sorry i should apologize oh yeah no I, yeah i said Amer- i meant american football when i was talking about football yeah uh, pig, the yeah. pig skins i guess i should have um, made that delineation yeah so i want to talk about the little things i noticed in io's uh entrance interview here uh you remember when he was talking about last the last person he dated and he was like yeah i had a girlfriend about six months ago that relationship only lasted a month and then he was single four years before that so he's been single about as much as soda about as much as was was on i i kind of took him as a player when he was like yeah i cheated on my last girl and all this stuff and it wasn't really the case here's the thing in his entrance interview he didn't say he cheated 
He saved that for his first appearance on the actual show. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, curious. they probably told him to hold that nugget back. Yeah. You know, for Which, that. I don't know. Show. I think that's kind of interesting because imagine being someone who is watching Terrace House Weekly. You're, you're keeping up with all this YouTube content and you're like, oh, man, look at this guy. I he seems cool. He hasn't dated anyone in five months. And then you watch the episode and like, boom, boom. And one thing, yeah. one thing too is that you know he was kind of painted as this player, but like I said, he's, he has very little um, dating experience. But he did say that usually doesn't happen for him, right? Usually, uh, it's like just kind of gets physical and that's it. But they never end up being like falling in love and being boyfriend and girlfriend. But he's there right. for what daily? Why does he want to go? To fall in love. Yes, that's to it. fall in love. And oh, he, wow. the love he found. Damn it. For reference, so wait, did he cheat on this? Was it his last ex that he had only dated for a month? Is the one he cheated yeah, on? Or was it what we, the, I'm presumably. Okay, so yeah. he oh he didn't specify. No, I he think did. That, I mean, it, I'm just putting two, two together. That's basically oh, what it okay. is. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then, then that makes sense. I, I think that was the phrase. Like, I cheated on my last girlfriend. Yeah. So at that point, he hadn't been in a full blown lo- like long term relationship since he was, if I'm doing the math correctly, eighteen, eighteen years old. Right. Yeah. And then I guess he spent all. I guess he spent all high school single too. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's he said that the last serious relationship he had was somewhere in junior high or high school, essentially. Yeah. Well, so yeah, because he said so. Six months was his last relationship. That was a month long, and so he would have probably have been like twenty two, if not early twenty three, at that point. And then four years before that, it would have been like eighteen. Yeah. Right, but we don't know if that was a serious relationship or not. Sure. Anyway, sure. That, that's all. Like that's anyway, in the weeds. You know who gives a damn? Yeah, we're but, in the weeds. Now. Um, another thing that I found kind of interesting about io's entrance interview is when they asked him what's your type the first thing he said oh, was yeah. i like tall girls with short hair <laughs> and i immediately thought of <laughs> damn he came on the same exact episode as risico did yeah where the producers and also trying mm? direct opposite of yui at that time yeah <laughs> yep yep and, well now yui has short hair she shorter does. maybe he uh asked for it maybe she maybe. obliged maybe well, no, I think she got her hair cut before. Well, wait, I think she got it. Before. Wait, maybe you're right. Didn't they have an Instagram post and her hair was like super short? Nah, that I don't know about. Yeah, she's got shorter hair now. OK, it's, it was it was during the show. It was but, on the show. But yeah, to, Robert, to your point, he does go on to confess that like, yeah, I say that, but I'm like kind of a hypocrite, you know? Yeah, well, yeah. he just he kind of yeah, goes after random girls at this point. I mean, that's the oh, thing, yeah. though. You know, you can all have your type and that's fine. And I encourage that. That's great that you know what you like. But like you cannot pick who you like, you know, out there in the real world. Oh, you yeah. you have no say in you. that whatsoever. It happens and you're like, fuck, I like this person <laughs> now. Fuck. Yeah, it's kind Damn of a it. problem. Fuck. Yeah, it's like shit. I I'm like you. Getting- <laughs> feelings yeah and, like, <gasps> captain feels and it's like it is annoying you know what i mean it's annoying when it happens yeah. you're like fuck i gotta deal yeah. with this shit now i remember last time i was on a fifth date i had to talk to the girl and be like damn it i i think i'm liking you and i hate that <sighs> but i like it god it's the yeah. worst. that's that's so, a tsundere ass shit right there but my that point really is, is right you can't <laughs> pick so like i said he can have his type all he wants but like it just happens and then you hope they like you back cross your fingers Please. and usually they don't <laughs> in my check <laughs> you know i don't think i've ever asked you this but do you have a, do you have a healthy grasp on your feelings toward love in general because like, absolutely the of, i'm the only you, married person on the show i love my true. wife yeah. i just say the, the whole like when you finally realize you love someone god that's the fucking worst isn't it <laughs> well it's like, i'm saying it's problematic for when you want to focus on other shit because it starts like occupying your mind a lot you're like okay. all right well this i mean is uh, now. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm only half joking when i say that it's a problem do you believe in life after love <laughs> thanks Cher. Yes. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I'm um, looking through my notes on the UE ex interview right now. Um, I to- I remember bolding this, and I feel like it would be a cardinal sin to not mention it on this god given episode of Tadaima. Robert, when- this is not a religious podcast. Quit with the fucking religious quips. <laughs> so when UE met with our our holy saint Sena, um, <laughs> in the when Shohei met with. <laughs> <laughs> Santa in the church. Yeah, no, but uh, Yui would talk about how whenever she was with Santa, Santa would say stuff like, uh, sometimes you d- won't know until you kiss them. And maybe my favorite oh, yeah. thing anyone has ever said, ever. Yeah. Yes. I feel men with my uterus. I hope <laughs> yeah. she, the, is, she is that figuratively, what, I hope so. <laughs> is that a translation issue? Like, I don't... Does she mean that when I when I 
have feelings for a man, I can feel it inside. I'm going to defer to Daily for this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So nice. I don't personally know the Japanese word for uterus, so I cannot <laughs> confirm that. Also, like a small biology lesson here. Just a small one. <laughs> yeah. Small biology lesson here. Yeah. Everyone open your books in, to page 86, in diagram 69. B. Da, 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 in da, typical da, 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 heterosexual da, 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 da. relations, there is no contact whatsoever with the uterus. Yeah. like So I don't think she's meeting like... I know whether or not I like them once I fuck them. Like, I don't think that's the statement here. Or, I think yeah, it's no. some kind of, like, allusion to a womanly feeling like, that, that I am not familiar with. Maybe yeah. she meant to say her ovaries. I don't know. Yeah, it was, that was a ovaries. weird line to read, though, Robert, when she did say that. I was like, what? No, hear, hear me out. What if there's some weird Japanese position, sexual position? Oh, God. <laughs> here we fucking go. <laughs> the Swedish helicopter? <laughs> Yeah, where Double Dutch rudder. somehow a guy can <laughs> touch the uterus, and those no. are the only men she Ow, falls pain. for. Wait, wait what? This what? is getting too. This is getting too much. That check your seat. Hit the. Ch- <laughs> Somebody change the subject right now. Oh my please. god! Oh my gosh! The, oh, I've got a chop. Daily, take us out of this hell that anyway. Robert drove us into. Anyway. Anyway. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, Welcome it to was the Kama Sutra podcast. No, it was it was interesting hearing like the way that she interacted with Sena though, because like she she really did like the way she was talking about her seer as like kind of an older sister figure that she was learning about love from, even though right. she was like super judgmental toward like the love that Sena had going on at any Dude, one time she said she had to, she said she admitted to it she owned up to it. she said i had i felt like i had to play the part of the prosecutor during the trial of sana the trial i love remember that, that? remember that yeah. part yeah yeah and she said she owned up like i said she i felt like i had to be the prosecutor in that case but then she said she felt bad because sana maybe had to act differently about the person she liked because on yui's account yeah see so, i i don't know i did find it fun that the Oh, the first thing Yui kind of says in her egg interview is, I'm sorry, Sana. Because, you know, while she was chastising Sana, being the prosecutor for her case about you kissed Noah off camera, Yui goes on and does the exact same thing like 18 episodes later. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird because I feel like having watched this, like Sana was the only like female member that Yui ever respected. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe yeah, and, even and the it, only woman Yui got along with in the house. Also, yeah. that that's a big topic that came up too during Yui Yui's uh exit interview is that her total, utter lack of experience interacting with other girls, especially in a close living situation like that. She said it's the first time. And she was there, what'd she say, eight months about? Yeah. And so it was a struggle for her because she's never done that before. And clearly Yui struggled with it, and clearly she had problems relating with multiple women on that show there was like a pattern of this really it was a theme so it was kind of a matter of time before she had some kind of spat with a a girl on the show it's almost like i feel like maybe the reason why she got along with sana is because like sana has the thickest skin but also they both kind of have that I don't want to be super shady here, but like duplicitous nature where it's like they're both very aware of how they appear on camera. Right. Yeah, Yeah. that's true. They're worried about they're very conscientious of what is happening on camera and what is not. Yeah. Yeah. And And I and and Santa even like there was a couple fourth wall breaking times in the show where she would be very forward about being conscious of the camera. Yeah, and I think with Yui, yeah, it's like, not let even me necessarily... sit here. That's my good side. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, with Yui, I don't even think it's necessarily about looking good for the camera. I just think she wants to look good. Period. She mm-hmm. has this outward persona that she tries yeah. to maintain. Yeah, like and, she would. Good point. She would be like that in real life, even if she wasn't on Terrace House. I think. Yeah, and and one of the clues that makes me think that with her exit interview is when they ask the question, you know, why did you hide that thing you did with Io, that secret rendezvous, as they keep calling it? Why did you hide it? Her excuse was, oh, I was in the middle of job hunting, so I, I, you know, I <laughs> can't have a relationship right now. I've got to hunt for a job. I thought I should job. be single. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, I mean, sure, I get that having your priorities in check, but that's the excuse you give before you bone down with someone, mm. not afterwards. Like I, I, 
sense. I can't yeah, she... do this. I need to look good because my prospective hires are going to watch this yeah. versus we got to keep this secret because I'm trying to get hired somewhere. <laughs> right. And, and she just like throughout the interview, she just kept trying to uh, make bullshit sco- like excuses for almost everything. It felt like, yeah, it's just a character flaw with her. It's like her first reaction is not to go to the truth of the matter. It's to like yeah. position herself in the best light in every interaction. And it's just so annoying. Right. And, and you could even tell there were some questions the producers asked where she kind of was scrambling i think in her head the most prominent Mm. part for that was when they were asking her about the sock incident she had a long pause oh yeah and she just totally like again left me unfulfilled she's like i don't know how to say it like yeah motherfuck that's how she ends it but after the long pause at the beginning she was like getting along with other girls is hard I'm like, sure, fine. Okay. You know, okay. if that's yeah. what you want to believe, sure. But when that's the first thing you say after a long pause of thinking, oh, shit, what do I say? What do I say? Shit, 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 shit. You know, it's like, dude, come on. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, ah. She was trying to, like, point the finger at everyone else but herself. And it <gasps> and, was just so obvious. And even with, like, she was like, I asked everyone. And they said that they didn't think I would ever call Risiko an old lady yeah an old maybe, maybe i was I just jabbering i, I never use that word i never would say that maybe i just said a word that sounds like old hag like an old yeah story okay. uh storybook character what the yeah, fuck i want to i want to fuck i want to quote that directly because i don't know what they teach their children in japan <laughs> but she said i was probably just jabbering away maybe i said barba papa which is a french children's book character who pulls that out of what the fuck ether? Like, you, it wasn't even like a up. good excuse. You couldn't even do, fucking pull a decent. Like, yeah, you're going to pick up a specific children's book fucking character out of your head and call someone that a I, French children's it'd book? Be like, I, it'd sure. be like me saying like, Jack, fuck you. And then later saying Thanks. like, oh, no, I was talking about. Hockey. Humpty Dumpty? Uh, yeah, you, said, fu- you fucking Humpty Dumpty ass yeah. looking motherfucker. Yeah, I probably said Humpty Dumpty. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, I exactly talk about like that, that all the time. <laughs> I mean, to I give you know, a, a bit of credit, at least like Barba Papa, I can see, because like Baba, right? That's like old hag. Mm. And so like the syllables are kind of there. So at least it isn't completely out Still of left field. Steel I said not hockey. I was deep saying deep something about a puck. W- I didn't whether say or not she, uh, whether yeah, or yeah. not she's full of shit. I mean, Pac Man used to be called Puck Man. That's real. Puck-a-man. And then they had to change it Puck-a-man. for Puck-a-man. North America. Anyways, Puck-a-man. it's but, like the bus driver in uh, South Park. Shut the fuck up, you old bitch! <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I said uh, my my little fish is being a snitch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, anyways, I whether or not you is full of shit. Uh, she yes. she thinks she's there's there's no fault i think i think she thinks she's on the right she's convinced herself she's on no, the she, right in every exchange like she can't be totally. wrong in her in her head yeah. that's and, illegal and, and it's totally like really interesting juxtapose 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 juxtaposition next to io because io is almost the total textbook opposite you know, he's like humble to a fault in a way. He will fully come out and put himself in the in less than attractive light and kind of charming in a way. Yeah. And it's kind of and I kind of like that about him. But they're so different in that sense. Yeah. It, it wasn't it kind of. It was eerie to me when I let the cat out of the bag to Rosako that they had done shit. Mm. And then it, obviously it got back to Yui. She found out about it. I thought she was going to flip shit on io mm-hmm. i thought she was going to lose it but she was just Risa like go? what's that risa go? you thought was gonna lose yui. it no i oh, thought yui, yui was gonna oh, lose, right, right. lose it on I'm io spilling the beans yeah, yeah for yeah. spilling yeah. the beans all right and like she didn't she was just like they what what happened uh tomorrow help, help me out guys so they're like the next yeah i like the next you conversation that they had yeah was like oh we're going out now <laughs> yeah we're going yeah. out now it was weird <laughs> yeah now it you're my so boyfriend sh- i'm your it, girlfriend it was eerie it was strange was that you think and it was like bumped up like boom boom just like that right right so it wasn't like there was any a result of editing or do we think it, that's well like, it, maybe it could well, be we also learn know. too, you know, it's not, I mean, the show, they say there's no script, but what they will do, you know, as I've learned recently, um, just through listening through other peripheral um, Terrace House, you know, stuff, media, is that they won't necessarily say, um, you know, go 
uh, or say this and say that, but they will say, hey, talk to this person in this room at this time of day. And so That's they'll fair. they'll end up, um, you know, kind of avoiding each other all day just so they can both meet in this room at this designated time to talk about this. So maybe that was the time that the producers were like, hey, be boyfriend and girlfriend in this playroom at this time. We've got the cameras set up. Wait, we seriously wait. They seriously do that is like, yeah, confirmed. Yeah. Oh, shit. yeah. It Lauren is confirmed. I talked about it in an interview. Yeah, and yeah, Lauren Sai actually talks about that on an interview on YouTube. Right. Oh wait, you, maybe I did see that. Okay, mm-hmm. is that the one where she's on the radio show? Yeah, I think I so. so. Yeah, yeah, that okay. Um, yeah, and that doesn't like break Tara's house for me. Like, no, not clearly they they have to put in the effort to like set up cameras and stuff, and it's like, hey, could you guys like, if you're gonna talk, can you come and talk in here about like, something that's, that's, that's meaningful? Yeah, where the cameras are yeah, set. We only have that's so not cameras. super like. No, in- it's not. Involved. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not totally egregious, and it's just like you know, it's a give and take. If you want the angles, if you want the cinematography, then you have to make some sort of sacrifices here. Can I can right. I tell you guys a quick anecdote? Anecdote. An anecdote. 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 Cure us. So this is gonna sound terrible at the gate, but bear with me. I had a dream that I met Lauren Sai. And that it, is terrible at the gate. That's, I, that's why I had to warn you. But I, <laughs> you must be so embarrassed right now. I, uh, I had a dream that I met her in a cafe of sorts. I like oh, ran in better. Yeah, this gets I, better. I, I ran right. into her in like a coffee shop as I was like leaving. I think I was like, "Hey, excuse me," and she's like, it, "Hi," and I was like, "Are you Lauren Sai?" And she's like. It, yeah, I am. I was like, is now a bad time? Could you like I because I like do a podcast about, you know, Terrace House, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Dude, it was like it almost like it almost felt I also kinda, work at a brewery. Right. To get it, yeah. I was gonna say you sure it didn't happen in a brewery in Seattle. <laughs> I know, fucking right. Um so like <laughs> you I, it was you so I don't know, I don't remember exactly what I said, it, but it was something to that that effect. And I'm she glad totally, that you had the podcast in mind during your dream. You're like, you mind coming on my podcast? We do this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like, or something that effect I was, like, going to tell her about it. And, like, That's awesome. she totally fucking blew me off. Like, just, like, nope, nope, got to go. Things to do. Goodbye. Damn. Just Damn. fuck you. Goodbye. Like, I highly doubt she's actually like that. I've heard she's really nice. But that is Too something. Bad yeah, you're just unaccountably dream. mad at Lauren's side. <laughs> like, like, why am I so No, she's angry. a bitch. Why? Because in my dream one time. <laughs> she wouldn't give me the time of day. But no, I seriously had that fucking dream, and it, it was like, God damn, that's so me. That's so weird. Dang, weird. Lauren, if you're, a, I know you're a longtime listener of the show. I'm so sorry for the past two, three minutes that creeped you out. Uh, we'd love to have you on the show for real. Uh, um, so if you're in a yeah. cafe and you see a guy named Colin, just uh, <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, full, full disclosure: Lauren yeah. Sai was, and I'm not even fanboying right now. She was one of my favorite characters on Aloha State. So, sure. <sighs> sure. While we're yeah. talking about dreams, let's go around the table, Robert. Oh, oh my god, dream you have recently. <laughs> but I, I had a dream that we continued this podcast. Well, that dream has been crushed, much like <laughs> IO soccer dreams. Okay, IO soccer. I, I, I won't get into but, it. One, but one time I did have a dream that Daly and I were riding roller coasters at Cedar Point. Oh, neat. Yeah, because so, I think we did go, that before, guys. So going back to Yui's exit interview, <laughs> um, she ends it. The last question they ask her is really weird, and I kind of want to dissect it. They ask her if there's a possibility of her coming back to the show. <sighs> Oh, please, and, no. And she said she doesn't regret joining Tara's house, but if she were to return, chances are around 40%. That's a really exact number. Yeah, yeah. I can't help but feel like this is the producers trying to set up a Sana 2.0. Yeah, definitely. definitely. That is what it felt like. Well, yeah, because yeah. She, they know she's a fucking sociopath and she sets drama <laughs> up. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Tell yeah. us how you really feel. Yeah, I was going to say, like, dark like horse, don't tell me you guys disagree. Like, <laughs> she's definitely going <laughs> like, to just this like, fucking so inter- so like this interview is like exhibit A why she's a sociopath. I mean, Going for the it, jugular. I would like her to show up just like as a cameo, like in it for a day or two and go get drinks. Nothing too crazy. Or maybe go ride horses just to see the look on everybody's face <laughs> when she like rolls she, up. She's going to have that. Yeah. Like Yui san. Yeah. Like, she's in reputation. Now. Totally. And bring Aya with her too. I, I Just to see everyone's face. <laughs> It'd be worth <laughs> it. For can, one I, episode. can I paint a picture for you guys real quick? Tokyo 2019, 2020, episode 44. <laughs> it, the things are a little bit tense in the house. There are like, there's like one love triangle that's like really bad. It's like two the guys hate each other and the girl wants to be friends with both of them, but it's a big old love triangle. 
enter Yui. She just joins the house like, hey guys, what's up? I was in the neighborhood and I'm just here to here to have Do fun. Laundry. But about that hand holding incident. And she just starts oh. some shit. Oh my some God. shit she doesn't really know about, but the producers just tell her, just say that for us. <laughs> they just like, and oh. just everything explodes. Like oh. there's no and she just watches everything the flames. just fucking erupts. No, oh, I I God. I wonder uh I just I'm I'm really curious about how this this new season's gonna ebb and flow but that's for another episode of tadaima um here's what the... i'm curious about because we we had a twitter poll about the end of opening new doors when it was like okay like io and yui are a thing and overwhelmingly people were like they're not gonna last i think it was like 70 yeah. percent of people participating yeah. in the poll was like no no not gonna last and they're the longest lasting couple to come out of this season no santa and noah still santa noah oh, yeah, yeah. Shit. but what well, do you let's, yeah let's do you go guys think this. that this is yeah. gonna last <sighs> i mean we didn't think I'm... it was gonna happen in the first place but now that it has how long have they been together now it's been like what six months seven months since december so i think five months that they are obviously weirdly compatible and I don't think mm-hmm. anyone foresaw this, but I called it a long time ago. We're doing Wait. predictions for part six. I was like, watch them get together. So I'm going to go ahead and toot my own horn for that because I did call it before uh, it ever happened. The the fortune teller in Karuizawa did call it. So somebody called it. Oh, OK. Someone called. OK, I'm the second person to call it. I'm fine with that. I'll be number two. Um, I didn't use any tarot cards or anything. But um, so I think this could have some legs. I think they could move in together. I don't know about marriage, though, and it doesn't seem like Yui is thinking marriage either, too, because remember, she was making the comment. She was like, if I'm still single, you know, I want to get married by the time I'm 30, you know, if I'm still, she said, if I'm still single, and I watched it twice to make sure she said that, if I'm still single by 26, you know, some, I can't remember exactly what she said after that, but then she goes, she, she, she might come come back to Tara's house. Oh, she might come back to Tara's house. That's right. That's right. Saigo but then no she goes, koi. but right Last now I'm love. with Io. Yeah. Right now I'm with Io and she kind of laughed. And so I don't think she's taking it super serious. I got that. I, just, I wrote this in my notes because I I wanted to highlight this. She says, well, for now, I'm dating Io. <laughs> yeah. It was very yeah, way, much like, yeah. it was very fucking overly passive. I'm just saying, if you're together with someone yeah. and you say, well, for now I'm with them. You're yeah, gonna get yeah. married. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm watching so, this as Io, and I'm like, yikes. I give them <laughs> seriously. I give them a year, and I think they could maybe live together, and then they're gonna realize it's a mistake, and then it's gonna be over. She's gonna find boogers. Mm. No, just, oh no. <laughs> I know how many the, times I have to tell you, quit reason. wiping your boogers underneath the bed. <laughs> I know. I uh, fuck it, dude. No. So they're they've been together about five months now. So they're they're two months past the honeymoon period, essentially. And so, I mean, they've already lived together before, technically not quite in the same way that a couple would live together, but I don't know. I, I would give it that like, I, th- I feel like they're, they're past the honeymoon phase. So they're in that period where it's it, the real test starts, whether or not they're going to stay together. So I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I kind of echo the sentiment that we're going to, they're going to hit the year mark. And then the, I think they're going to hit a rough patch pretty hard. Yeah. I'm giving them a year. Yeah. And I think, I yeah. Think as soon as, part ways. as soon as things become inconvenient, like I never get to see you because you're working in Tokyo or whatever else. It's just gonna fall apart. I think it's a marriage of convenience. Ooh, maybe so. Yikes! Yeah, Yikes. I yeah. It's just hard to see that relationship ending happily. But but then you know to play devil's advocate here, didn't you? We always say that you should marry the first person you sleep with. Am I imagining this? Wasn't um, she like? Yeah. Did she say something like that? I feel like that's part of her. That was part of her virginal image. Her, she was trying her facade. To, yeah. 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 I can see that. I mean, she's like, I'd never kiss anyone that I didn't like really, that I didn't love, I think was the, yeah. was the phrasing. Right. Yeah, and that's, that's in her bullshit. exit interview, you know, she admits that she fell in love with IO after they kissed. Uh, but she still believes that the proper way to do it is to confess and then kiss. I found that really weird to me. It's like you've actually lived that that other way of doing it and to still fully wholeheartedly be able to say to a camera the quote proper way to do it is confess then kiss. That's See, that comes off as so weird. formal. No, that's that's funny to me because I thought I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense because 
I'm currently watching Boys and Girls in the City. Yeah. And there were there was some commentary about someone was like, yeah, I'll probably like kiss her and then, you know, confess that I like her. And they were like, that's no, you got to do that the other way. <laughs> that's weird. Uh, uh, it's not how this works. That's not how no. this works. See, I'm on the other side of the, that fence because I think there's nothing hotter than like a spontaneous mutual kiss that no one's expecting. Like it's very passionate, right? And then obviously you have that discussion. Maybe you don't have a formal discussion and you just start dating, but I don't know. There's something to be said for that. Like it's so weird. Like, hey, I like you. Shake hands, deep bow. Here's your flowers. Here's your candy. Can I kiss you now? Like something so sterile about that, you know? Yeah, I and I know I'm exaggerating, but you guys know what I mean, right? No, I I'm more so closer, and I know it's a just like massive cliche, but the whole all is fair and love and more sort of thing, like. There's not really a set Murder. way in which love, ha- love happens yes. between two people. It just happens the way it happens. Depends if on it the works, people, yeah. it works. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. 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 I think yeah. Yui wears the pants for sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking anyone <laughs> yeah. Uh, would dispute that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just... I feel like Io maybe might be whipped. Like, he's not just well, not wearing the pants, but he is like, yes, dear. Yes, dear. Of course, I dear. I wonder. He just doesn't like he doesn't call her out for anything. Like he'll he'll do what he thinks is right, like telling Risiko or yeah, behind her back. To yeah. Risiko, but he won't be like, Yui, we need to talk to Risiko. Yeah. He like just he, lets her do whatever yeah. she's doing. He'd be like that cool dad that like when you're grounded, you know, he goes in and sneaks you like the Nintendo Switch or something like that. Yeah. Nice. You know, I I feel like if they were friends of mine in real life, they'd be the kind of couple where if we're trying to organize a thing, I would pretty much only talk to Yui. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> because I, I wouldn't even yeah. bother looping Io into the conversation. It would just be like, right. Yui, you you own his schedule. Let's yeah, figure if, out when. If he answers the phone, you're going to be like, can I speak with the decision maker, please? <laughs> Hi, can I speak to the one who has your testicles in her purse, please? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hey, honey, uh, can I have my testicles for a second, please? No. <laughs> no. I have to do some thinking. Here's some man thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Uh, I think this is a good <laughs> talking yeah. about men's testicles. <laughs> testicles. I think it's a good place to yeah. cut this show off. All right, man. That was Yui. That was Io. And I value them so much for giving us all that entertainment on the show. Oh, wow. And it made for some interesting listening on their exit interviews. But, man, they're a messed up couple. Yeah, I, oh, I sure really hope away. that. I really hope that uh, Tokyo 2019, 2020 has moments as notable as like this. this. It's just so exciting to talk about and, and break down. And I mean, not that I hope that anyone has a shitty relationship or anything like that. I wouldn't wish that Find upon someone. Find more but... psychopaths. Uh, yes. 2019, 2020. They've, they've, they've definitely That's gotten the a little bit more uh, liberal with who they cast. On yeah, the show. that's the goal. But look, yeah. All I'm saying is, Yui, Io, I hope you both find happiness. I don't necessarily mm-hmm. mean that'll be with each other. I just hope in general you both find happiness, however. I, big I, love, I blessed rice say, patty. Yes, okay. indeed. I will say we're 0 and 2 with predicting relationships on this podcast. We are, <laughs> yes. we are 0 and 2. It's, I mean, you, we can only tell so much off of what the show gives us, you know. I know. So, I know you could call funny. us experts. Yes. Sex experts. Someone does. Yeah. Sex Whoa. experts. There you go. Done. Great job. That's on Colin. your tombstone right there, Colin. You hear life's Colin Sparling. <laughs> Known sex expert. <laughs> Known sex expert. Um, <laughs> hey, if you enjoyed our show, tell a friend. You know, get them hooked onto this crazy atmosphere known as Terrace House and let them binge that show and then binge our show to come to accompany them um yes. and if you don't have any friends to tell or you've to- already told all of your friends why not tell the world by leaving an itunes review it would mean a lot um we're gonna start doing a thing where we want to share the kind words that people have shared with us to the, the p- same people back i guess to the audience yeah. <laughs> that is of our of our show and uh jack i think you've picked out a wonderful itunes review for us yeah, here we go. This was left on April 24th of this year by Rocket Striker, titled A Much Needed Podcast for Your Favorite Netflix Show. Oh, how much I long for a Terrace House podcast. I'm so happy I discovered Sadaima. The chemistry between the podcasters are fantastic. Uh, a great mix of fun and discussion. It truly feels like a couple of good friends having a great time talking about their favorite show, all while still feeling like a very organized conversation. You guys hear that? We sound organized. <laughs> See, I, We're they're really on, if only they knew. <laughs> How unorganized this is. I'm this just is, thinking it's on fire right now. It's funny how much they think we're all friends. I, I know. Even, we hate each other so I don't much. even I know you your real names. 
God. Yeah, no. No, um, but but thank you for that, Rocket Striker, in all seriousness. And if you guys want us to read your reviews, leave us a review on iTunes or on Podbean and let us know that it's there. And we are going to start reading these weekly at the end of the show. So thank you so much. And I look forward to the next one next week. I can't wait Heck for yeah. like the the Tadaima behind the music or like the Metallica some kind of monster, but like our version of it where it's like, <sighs> yeah, Daily was just on so much fucking meth at the time. I just, <laughs> we just were getting like, like she just wasn't she was passed out for half of the time we were recording. Like just don't just fucking... out me like that, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there we was thought it was meth, but it was just Krispy Kreme donut glaze. <laughs> there was an episode that we published where Colin just passed out from all the heroin use. So like the last half of it, I had to just kind of piece together bits of Colin's recordings from past weeks to kind of make him seem like he's in this episode I, until the end. Dark like, I underbelly. don't know, but what you're talking about it's just like broken uh, as fuck sentences. This is the seedy <laughs> underbelly of Tadaima. There you go. Tadaima, yeah. the dark side. When we come um, back with Behind the Music, Tadaima. Okay. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, theories about our rampant drug use, I guess, uh, you can email any and all of those things to us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. You can catch us next Tuesday for another episode of our show. This has been Tadaima. Thanks for listening. Itadakimasu! Email us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. Follow us on Instagram at Tadimagram, on Twitter at Tadimapod, and check us out on Facebook and YouTube at Tadima, a Terrace House podcast.